to his behavior in the 1970s. This led to an immense manhunt. This was the first I had heard of the murders or the infamous acronym. I was surprised and taken aback by the news that this was happening back home, but I don't recall following the local Wichita news closely in 2004. I do remember two things. I mentioned the manhunt to Darian, who had read about it also, and sometime that summer or fall I asked Mom on the phone about the murders in the 1970s. She told me that at the time a lot of women were fearful. She had been scared since Dad would sometimes work late and was taking night classes at WSU, but Dad had reassured her, told her not to worry. She was safe. In the late fall, I read about the new possible attributes of BTK. I remember puzzling over the list, coming back to it a few times because it was nagging at me. B.T.K. had written to the police that he had a cousin in Missouri and a grandfather who played the fiddle and died of lung disease. His father died in World War II. He was in the military in the 1960s, had a lifelong fascination with trains, and always lived near a railroad. I kept thinking of a hazy dreamlike image of a white house with black trim and a train running right near it, close enough to rattle the windows— a house like my grandparents' house, but that didn't make any sense. I determined the list was odd but couldn't make anything solid from it, and I dropped it when I heard in December there had been an arrest. It ended up being a false arrest, and I don't remember following the news after that. Hindsight would come hurtling down soon enough, but I'm not alone in thinking my ordinary, normal, everyman dad was the last person on earth who could be BTK. In September, I started substitute teaching in five districts. The farthest district was an hour away, so it was rough having to drive Darien to work and then out west to reach a classroom by nine at the latest. The pay was good, though, and I soon quit my job at Target, delighted to have evenings and weekends free to spend with Darien. After being laid off from his avionics job in Wichita, my brother enlisted in the Navy and commenced boot camp located north of Chicago in the fall. He invited us and my folks to his graduation ceremony in early November, after which he would be headed to the East Coast for submarine school and then out to sea for months at a time. I was hopeful my folks could come to Chicago so we could spend a few days together, but Dad told us they couldn't make it, saying he was too busy to get away. I was unsure what to think. That was extremely uncharacteristic of my dad. But with Chicago only four hours away from us, Darian and I were able to drive over for a long weekend. On an early Friday morning, we cheered as Brian marched in with his shipmates. After a ceremony, he gave us a hug, happy to see us, and to get off base to spend a couple of days sightseeing. On our walk to the Shed Aquarium that afternoon, stinging wind blasted us, and Brian had to grab his white sailor's cap so it wouldn't blow into Lake Michigan. The next day, we enjoyed the sun as we wandered around the Brookfield Zoo. Brian told us he might be able to fly home for Christmas. Darian and I already had our plane tickets and said we hoped to see him. December 2004 Several inches of snow fell the night before we were supposed to fly home in December, and the world was still a blur of bluish-gray when we left in the pre-dawn darkness for the airport. Darian was calm as he cautiously made his way down the one cleared lane of the highway, but I was gripping the passenger armrest with white knuckles. We reached the airport in time, but found out at our gate that our plane was delayed and we were going to miss our connection at O'Hare. Between the snow, the delay, and having only flown twice in my life, I was an anxious mess, but Darian handed me a hazelnut latte and said we'd get home. He was used to flying and patiently talked me through the next several hours of holiday travel despondency while I wrapped my hands around my drink, trying to warm my entire body. When we arrived in O'Hare, hours later, we had to wait in a long line to rebook a flight for the next day and to secure a hotel. We stood in another long line to pick up our checked bags, only to learn they had continued to their destination. I only packed the bare minimum in my carry-on and froze in my thin hoodie outside. My winter coat, gloves, and hat were on a plane to Kansas. We headed back to the airport on Christmas Eve and found out we were going to have to make a connection through St. Louis to reach Wichita. 
So much for Christmas Eve service with my family.